This session is officially being recorded uh, as previously discussed on the uh, on the group. Today we'll be discussing um, the legal, uh, legal requirements of a valid civil marriage. So I hope I am audible to each and every one of you in here um, without any problems. So, um, as we all know, last time we discussed um, the engagement. So today we'll discuss the legal requirements of a civil marriage. Uh, that is uh, on chapter three of your prescribed textbook. So this is a very, um, a very easy topic. Uh, it's probably gonna be one of the interesting topics because I uh, might know that some of you are probably married, some of you are probably engaged to be married, some of you are looking to get married in the near future, and some of us are probably not looking to get married ever. So yeah. Anyway, uh, so a civil a civil marriage. Um, I I hope that you guys did uh, go through the material. Um, as always, I ask questions so that we can be, uh, we can have a conversation because this is a very interesting topic. Uh, anybody um, knows what a civil marriage is? Uh, you can put up your hand or you can uh, type in the chat box. Uh, good evening, Tanya. Good evening, Clarissa. Just so you messages now you can uh, type in the chat box or you can put up your hand and go for it okay uh no one at this time so um a civil marriage uh, a civil marriage uh, is a union between two people of the opposite sex that is a correct answer tanya it's very very correct so uh, in order to be clear or in order for you to get full marks on the definition of a civil marriage, you can go with, the defi with that definition. Obviously, they're probably gonna maybe take away half a mark or something, uh, but you can always go with the definition of the textbook. It is a um, legally recognized lifelong voluntary union between one man and one woman, excluding all others. I'm just going to put that on silent just to avoid um, further disturbances. Apologies for that. So it should be a union, uh, a voluntary union. It has to be voluntary. Please never forget voluntary. It has to be a voluntary union uh, between one man and one woman to the exclusion of others, of all others. So it's one man and one woman to the exclusion of all others. This is also um, in view to, uh, to make sure that there is no uh, adultery or something like that. Because if you just say uh, of the opposite sex, and then if you didn't say exclusion of all others, people will use that as a, you know, as, as a, as an escape plan to say the definition, because this is the older definition, the, 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 the first definition in the textbook is the older definition. So you have to say to the exclusion of all others. So um, going forward, as you all know that um, uh, from 2006, uh, we, have the, we have the Civil Union Act 17, of 2006, and then the Civil Union Act, it permits civil unions between um, the parties of same sex. So that will include gay, lesbians, uh, transgender, and so on and so on and so on. So I, I don't want you to confuse the difference between a civil marriage and a civil union. So please do not confuse the difference between a civil marriage and a civil union. 
it's two different things. A civil marriage, it is, it is a voluntary union of one man and one woman exclusion, with the exclusion of all other persons. However, the civil union, it, it, it permits both same sex and opposite sex. But I don't want us to go there now. I just want to, to, to make it clear that you do not confuse the two when they ask you what is a civil marriage and then you're gonna start thinking of a civil union and then you're gonna say uh, it can also be uh, it can also be referred to as a, a union between um, same sex parties. No, that is not a civil uh, a civil marriage. Civil marriage it's one man and one woman, exclusion of all others. That is the civil marriage. So um, the today we're talking about the requirements so one of those requirements uh those of you that attended the the engagement session um you will know that one of the one of the requirements of the engagement uh for an engagement to be valid was consensus so consensus is an agreement so this is also uh one of the requirements and it it is one of the most important requirements within the requirements uh, for concluding a, a, civil, a civil marriage. So consensus is needed. A consensus is needed because um, consensus is an agreement. So because consensus is an agreement, so it forms a contract. And what, what, what is the definition of a contract? A contract is an agreement which is entered into with the intention of creating obligations. Now, this is very important. A civil marriage, it, it, gives, rise, it gives rise to obligations. So once you enter into a civil, a civil, a civil marriage, you, you have now, you automatically, you now have um you you are now obligated to support the other you are now obligated so, to support your spouse if you are a woman you are now obligated to support your husband if you are a man you are now obligated to support your spouse in whatever way so it comes with it comes with um responsibilities and obligations so once you enter into a it's, it's a very um I don't want to say complicated, but it's a very, it's one of the toughest unions because now we have the civil union, which is, uh, which is a bit lighter on, on with regards to, to, to rights, responsibilities and, and obligations. But with regards to the uh, civil marriage, it's one of the, of the marriages that when you plan to get married, if you're planning to get married and you're going to get married um, under the, uh, uh, under the civil marriage, uh, according to the marriage act, you must probably do some research and find uh, and find out what you are you are getting yourself into. Because nowadays we 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 find a lot of um, a lot of cases, uh, divorce cases, or cases where somebody will be like, "But I didn't know I was getting into a civil marriage. I didn't know that I had to." To, 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 to choose if I'm getting uh, in marriage, uh, to a marriage in common of property or out of property, something like that. So one of the things that you need to know is that uh, that particular civil marriage, if you go to, to home affairs now and be like, hey, I want to get married, and then you go there with your spouse, they don't usually ask you if you want to get married in common of property or out of common of property. If you didn't mention that, one of the serious consequences is that you're getting married in community of property, which means whatever that you have now will go to your spouse, uh, like half of it, and then something like that. If you divorce or if you die or something like that. So it's one of the most important marriages that when, when you're getting into, you must do your research. So another, another requirement. So you will see that the requirements um, for, for for a civil mar for a civil marriage are uh, mostly the same or aligned to the to the requirements of uh, of engagement i keep on referring to engagement so that you you, you can find uh, a connection between the two although the the engagement might be less binding 
to, to, to a marriage, but you will see that there is, um, there is like a, um, uh, what do they call it? Like a, a, a bridge in between the two uh, that connects, yes, similarity. Thanks, Tanya. So, so um, if, if you get questions like this, you must think engagement and think marriage, and then you, you will find um, similarities in between. So uh, another, another requirement, it's um, the capacity to act. So we spoke about the capacity to act previously. Those who attended the previous session will know. Um, the capacity to act, so, so because uh, civil marriage is based on agreement, so both parties must have the capacity to act. We, we did um, speak about the capacity to act. Uh, I, I, I'm not too sure if we spoke about it in law of persons. Those of you that do law of persons, uh, you're going to find that a lot. Uh, the capacity to act is the capacity to, to be able, it's the capacity to be able to enter into a contract. So um, that is one of the requirements. So if a person does not have the capacity to act, uh, so we also mentioned last time that uh, a mentally ill person doesn't have the capacity to act. And then we spoke about infants, um, the children between zero and seven years old, uh, say children, but mostly babies, they don't have the capacity to act. So therefore they cannot get into a civil marriage. And the mentally ill person, they cannot get into a civil marriage. So if one does not have a capacity to act, it's either they're an infant, uh, which is unspeakable, or they are mentally ill, they cannot enter into a civil marriage because they don't know how to distinguish between right and wrong. They cannot enter into a civil marriage. However, we do have minors. Um, we spoke about minors previously. We said minors, um, people between the ages of seven and 18. So minors, they, they have a limited capacity. But when it comes to um, when it comes to, to to marriage, you will see there is a distinction um, for boys. For boys, their age of puberty is fourteen, and then for girls, the age of puberty is twelve. So once they reach that age and above, they are able to get married. So if you have um, if you have a a twelve year old girl or a 14 year old boy, they can get married. Yes, they can get married. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, give me a few seconds. I need to attend to something real quick. I'll be back just now. Uh,
sorry, ladies and gentlemen, about that. I have uh, an unexpected visitor, so I just need to let them out quickly. I'll be back in a minute. Ooh, I'm sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that's what happens when people just decide to. Oh, Hutato, sorry, I, the, the, the mic, um, I had muted my mic because I had to attend to unexpected visitors. So next time when people just knock or say I'm outside, I think it's very important that you just keep quiet and, you know, because people just, they just pop in unexpected, you know, they, they don't even say people these days. Anyway, I am sorry about that. Um, I know where I was. We were talking about um, the ages of puberty, which is 12, and uh, 12 for girls and 14 for boys. Uh, so that is up until the age of 18. So these kids, I'll call them kids because definitely they are kids to me. Uh, they, they need consent. Um, so they have, they do have capacity to act, but they have limited capacity. So what that means is that they need to be assisted by somebody. So especially with the marriage, because marriage is something very, something very, very serious, and it has uh, dire consequences. So they need assistance, and they need the assistance from parents, or from guardians, or from the high court or from the master of high court. I uh, will talk about that um, in detail. Uh, for now, I, I just want, I was just talking about this because we have, we're talking about the capacity to act. So um, uh, that is it with the capacity to act. And then there is a uh, prodigal, prodigals. First time I knew about a prodigal, it was, from the Bible. And then when I started studying law, and then I had a prodigal, I, I remembered a song that we used to sing in church about to those who know what that is. So um, anyway, um, a prodigal uh, legally uh, uh, in, oh, Muzibel. Uh, hi, can I ask? something relating to our assignment. Question three, my mic is not working. 
for some strange reason, the question asks us to define a civil union and three general requirements to be met. When I check the three requirements, they, they refer to civil marriage. Are they the same for civil for civil union? Ah, uh, not really. So the a civil marriage and a civil, I don't know when, when you started, uh, when, when you signed in to, to, um, to this uh, tutorial. So I did make reference to the, to the civil union. So a civil union, it is not, yes, a civil union, it is not, uh, it is not a civil marriage. It's a, a different thing. We will get to the civil, uh, to the civil union partnership, uh, civil unions are uh, with, um, in accordance with uh, Civil Union Act 17 of 2006, which permit um, uh, unions between same-sex couples, uh, opposite-sex couples, and so on and so on. But we will get to that. I don't want to uh, dive into the assignment because we're going to be thrown off um, the, the track for today. So we'll get to the civil union. If it does happen that we didn't get to the civil union now, I have made a promise previously. If you attended the previous sessions, I said I will um, I will do a booster, a booster session where we will discuss the assignment questions one by one. So that will be a week before if we didn't get to the to the civil. Let me just see quickly. Let me see something quickly. Um, the requirements. Yeah. So so for this chapter, for this chapter alone. We're going to be talking about um, the legal requirements of a civil marriage, but don't worry, we will get to that. And then, um, if it happens that we didn't, I'm not too sure what your study guys look like. If it happens that we didn't, then we'll have a booster session where we'll talk about your assignment in detail. I hope that is okay because if we start getting into the assignment now, we might we might lose track and be thrown off. Okay. Um, so let us continue. But in the meantime, uh, because now I'm already here, in the meantime, you can uh, get the Civil Union uh, Act 17 of 2006. The requirements are listed there. You can, you can get the, the Civil Union Act 17 of 2006, then you will see the, the requirements for the, for the, for the Civil Union uh, Partnership. So uh, back to the prodigal. Uh, a prodigal uh, legally is defined as um, a person who, uh, because of an inability to, um, to control his finances or who, who doesn't know how to, uh, I'm not gonna put this. It's somebody who, whenever they have money, they, they squander that money like nobody's business. They will spend it, they will even spend something that they don't have. So that is a prodigal. And that is, um, it is very risky because a prodigal is somebody with um, uh, a full capacity, but because they're unable to take care of themselves whenever they get money, the thing that they think is a casino or better way or whatever it is, the, where they, they spend the money and they even, they can even sell anything in the house just because they, they, they have a certain, a certain addiction or incapability of taking care of themselves. So a prodigal is um, somebody who is like that. So according to, to the law now, it's still not, not clear if a prodigal can enter into a marriage with or without consent. However, uh, for those of you that are doing law, so let, let's leave it like this. For those that are doing um, that are doing family law, I just want to make a reference to those of you that do law of persons. Well, if you are here, so uh, for, for for with regards to law of persons, a prodigal does need consent to enter into any contract. Since marriage is a contract, I I would believe it's something that I need to inquire. I would believe that they need consent because marriage is a contract. But according to law of persons, a prodigal needs a consent from the curator or assistance from the curator to enter into any form of contract. According to family law, it is not clear. 
So um, we said uh, previously, another requirement was the capacity to act, and that included um, the capacity to act includes uh, a mentally ill person. So now another uh, um, another point, if somebody is mentally ill, that person cannot enter into a marriage. So what happens is sometimes you find that uh, a mentally ill person um, now goes and, and gets married. That marriage is void. It's like the marriage never happened because they do not have the capacity to act. So the, the, the most important thing with regards to, uh, to mental illness is that if somebody is declared mentally ill, it doesn't necessarily mean that their capacity to act is affected. What that means is that they have been declared mentally ill, but in order for, the, for their capacity to act to be questioned, there has to be, uh, the, the, it, it has to be, there need to be some kind of proof to say this person is mentally ill. It looks like today we have a lot of problems, but it's okay. Uh, the session will cut off in 10 minutes and then we will continue if it does cut off. So if that person is mentally ill and then they, 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 they want to enter into a marriage or the other person that wants to enter into a marriage with them uh, has proof or maybe it can be a family member who is just looking out for a fellow family member, a brother or a sister, they can say, no, this person is mentally ill, but then the court will want proof to say, okay, you're saying that this person is mentally ill, obviously the proof is going to be uh, maybe some kind of diagnosis or medical report or something like that, but there needs to be a proof to prove that this person is mentally ill, therefore they cannot enter into a civil marriage. So with regards to, while we're still on the, on the mental illness, there is something called lucidum intervallum. Lucidum intervallum, let me, let me type it here. Some of you have it in your textbook. Lucidum intervallum. I hope that spelling is correct. If it's not, you can just um, look from your textbook and then, um, and then correct it or check it on the internet. So what that means is that, okay, so here is a mentally ill person. This person is mentally ill and there is proof that this person, this person is mentally ill, but this person has some certain episodes to say, okay, one moment, I'm fine. And then the next thing, something is wrong. And then one moment I am fine. And then the next thing, something is wrong. So that is what is referred to as lucidum intervallum. So a person who has lucidum intervallum, that is like some series of episodes. Like I said, one moment is fine and the other moment is, is not. If that person enters into a marriage, excuse me, enters into a marriage or a civil marriage, that marriage is valid. I know this is gonna be confusing. That marriage is valid only if when this person who has some kind of episodes at the time of the marriage, they can be proof that it was the time when he entered into that marriage, it was the time that he was thinking straight. But if it is proved that, okay, fine, he has a uh, lucid interval, and then at the time of the marriage, he, it was at the time that he wasn't thinking straight, which is going to be very difficult to prove. I don't know the type of test that they use, but uh, if, if it happens that it, it's at the time that um, he was not able to, um, to think straight, then that marriage is, is not valid. So, if he enters into a marriage and at that time he was having some episodes and he was fine, then the marriage is fine. But if it can be proved that he was 
crazy uh, for the sake of uh, for the lack of, of the right word, then that marriage is not valid. So the burden of proof, um, the burden of proof lies not with the mentally ill person. The burden of proof lies with the party that wants to prove that the other person that entered into a marriage, the, it lies with the person that, that wants that marriage annulled. So let's say now my brother got married and my brother has episodes of lucidum intervallum and then I feel like, no man, something is wrong here. My brother would not have consented to this marriage in his right mind. So it means that at the time that he entered into this marriage, he was not okay. Then the burden of proof lies with me, the third party to, to go and prove it and say, um, this marriage is invalid because at this time he was having lucidum intervallum, so he was not thinking straight. So this marriage, uh, I would like it to be annulled and then I would have to bring forth some proof to show that indeed, um, this person was having some episodes at that time, then that is when the, 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 the marriage can be announced. And please, I know we spoke about the, we spoke about the curator, the one um, that gives consent. When a person is mentally ill, that person is mentally ill. They do not need a curator for the purposes of marriage. Please, you must draw a distinction between that. For the purposes of marriage, they do not need a curator. They have the capacity of an infant. Uh, an infant, like we said, is a child, it's a baby between the ages of zero to seven. So a mentally ill person of any age has the capacity of an infant, which means they are thinking like a person who is zero to seven years old. Therefore, they do not need a curator because the purpose of a curator is to assist uh, somebody who is incapacitated for, for certain things. But when it comes to marriage, you cannot consent on behalf of a, of a mentally ill person and say, I'm consenting for you now because you're mentally ill, uh, you are getting married. That is unconstitutional. Uh, it doesn't work like that. So um, for the purposes of time, uh, because it, it already says here there is three minutes remaining. So I'm just going to uh, cut off this session and then join again. So you will use the exact same link. Uh, I'll just cut it off so that I don't want it to cut us off because I always have problems with um, when I have to upload the videos. So I'll just cut it off and then I will uh, come back in again. Then we'll have the 40 minutes again. I think that will save us enough time before we finish, because we are almost halfway uh, on today's session. Uh, please join back in the next few seconds. 